in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Wave your hands to Jesus and bless his name. Father, we bless you. The God of all flesh, the doer of all good things. Is someone blessing the name of the Lord? From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We worship you. We bow our hearts before you tonight. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his wonder-working power in the midst of his people. The Bible says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Father, we worship you and we bless you tonight. Now ask him for an encounter cry from the depth of your heart I have come oh God give me an encounter appear unto me like you did in Shiloh even by your word someone is praying appear unto me by your word Appear unto me by your word. Appear unto me by your word. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever.
Father, we have come for an encounter tonight. Visit us even by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. For the Bible declares that now the Lord is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Therefore, we decree and declare that there is liberty tonight. There is the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles. And to you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you appreciate someone by your left and right, even as you sit down? Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And um, for those who are coming here for the first time, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Koinonia. Those who are following us from across the globe, the Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. I love the teaching of the word because that is how we grow in the spirit. We grow through understanding. When we are able to discern the will of God, we are able to comprehend the ways of God. Then it translates into growth and with growth comes authority and a greater manifestation of spiritual power in our lives. And so the Lord will help us tonight in Jesus name. I want to, I just decided to take the time um, to think about what God has done and continues to do through this ministry. And um, I decided to take the time to sincerely appreciate all those who have helped to get this teaching across to many across the globe, all um, whether social media platforms, individuals who have become extensions of what we do in the name of Jesus may the God of heaven who is the rewarder of men reward you in Jesus mighty and matchless name we pray tonight's teaching is for someone who is tired of his current level tonight's teaching is for someone who knows that there is a greater experience in life and destiny Tonight's teaching is for someone who is determined to fight stagnation in his life. Tonight's teaching is for someone who has vowed that the year will not end for you the way it started. If you are that person, I want you to shout a loud amen. amen. Tonight's teaching is for a family that wants to end confusion once and for all in their lives. And for men and women who are desperate, you are saying, Lord, you have to crown my year with goodness and with mercies. Tonight is for someone who is tired of shame, tired of reproach, and you are saying there has to be a way out. My life must reveal the glory of God. If that is you, one more time, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Lord put it in my heart to teach um, on a subject that I believe affects everyone, every one believer. There are teachings that may not necessarily affect everyone, but there are certain teachings where you never plateau as far as having a thorough understanding is concerned. There is always room for growth. And there's always room to rise to higher dimensions. Tonight is one of those teachings. And the Lord will grant us grace in Jesus' name. I'm teaching on the topic, the Lord is my shepherd. Please write it down. Write it down. Clap, but write it down. We have a lot of work to do. I want to show you by the integrity of scripture, how God leads men. How men are able to end seasons of stagnation. How men are able to end seasons of confusion in their lives by accessing the leadings of God. Hallelujah. For someone, God sent you to church tonight because he has vowed that you must go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and by all means I speak to you as touching this grace you must make progress you must go forward in the name of Jesus Christ Proverbs 4 and verse 18 the Bible says but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day one more scripture Job 8 and verse 7 Job chapter 8 and verse 7 the Bible says though thy beginning was small it says yet thy later end should greatly increase so clearly we see in scripture that there are no limits for the believer in Christ as far as actualizing destiny is concerned revealing the glory of God and bearing fruits there is no limit for the believer the Bible is also clear as to the fact that God is glorified when we make progress God is glorified when we advance and God is glorified when we maximize destiny in John chapter 15 John 15 from verse 8 then we go to verse 16 it says herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so the father is glorified when we bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples go to verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain so God is glorified when we advance God is glorified when we make progress in life in all of its dimensions God is glorified when we maximize destiny in Ephesians chapter 3 when you read from verse 10 3 10 Ephesians it says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God so it is not angels that will reveal the multifaceted wisdom of God it is the church manifesting in her glory that reveals the manifold wisdom of God hallelujah the subject of stagnation and limitation is one that everyone dreads I do not know anyone who embraces the idea of being limited or stagnated in life um, we all want to make progress and to the degree to which we make progress we find fulfillment in fact psychologists would tell us that one of the clear indices that measure fulfillment is a sense of progress that every time you find yourself in a sense of limitation retrogression and then worst of them stagnation it is able to dry up the spirit to a point where an individual even gives up there are people today committing suicide there are people today in hospitals depressed because they do not think that there is much to their lives again they have done everything they know to do and exhausted all their options as far as making progress is concerned I am convinced that no matter how confused everyone is sincerely doing what they know to do as far as making progress is concerned tonight God is going to grant us grace in Jesus name hallelujah Psalm 23 is a very interesting Psalm this is the Psalm of David and most of his Psalms were his contemplations will begin our reading from verse 1 the psalm is said the Lord is my shepherd and as a result I shall not want there are many things the Bible tells us that the Lord is for instance the Bible says he's our ever-present help in time of need the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous will run to it and be saved and all of the dimensions of God's names remember I have taught you here that God is multi-dimensional in his operations are we together that what one dimension will do is not what the other will do so here the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd he said I shall not want let's read it down to six and then I'll begin to teach he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters verse 3 says he restoreth my soul 
he leadeth me again in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake verse 4 says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will not fear i will fear no evil why for thou art with me your leadership is my security even at times of uncertainty it says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me verse 5 thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointed my head with oil my cup runneth over verse 6 now surely all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever so the psalmist says the lord is my shepherd in other words when you find me making progress triumphing from one level of grace to the other it is not because i know so much it is not because i am invincible to all the impediments that stop men from making progress but that among the many things i have found god to be I have discovered that he can be shepherd this talks about his leadership there are many reasons why people fail in life there are many reasons why people are stagnated in life in fact i looked up the word stagnation while preparing my notes for this sermon and um, i wrote down a few things here just to put our minds in the same page write the word stagnation the word stagnation has many meanings, but I coined out a few that I thought would give us um, light and understanding even as we proceed. I wrote down here that stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement. Please write. Stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress stagnation also means a state of inactivity a state of inactivity having life but without motion very terrible description having life but without motion so one more time stagnation is a condition that is marked by lack of movement or progress a state of inactivity having life but with no motion hallelujah this arguably is about the number one reason why people do not make progress in life people are in that state of inactivity and there are many factors number one is ignorance ignorance is biblically the first reason why people do not move because knowledge is represented in light and you are only able to move to the degree to which you see so ignorance number two we have demonic activities hallelujah Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. He said, but Satan hindered us. So we know that demon spirits can hinder the advancement and the progress of people. But the third reason, which is my concern for tonight, is the absence of divine direction, the leadings of God. The inability to access the leadings of God is arguably about the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest explanation for the helpless stagnation of many. No matter what kind of vision you have, no matter what kind of great destiny you have before you, the inability to access and to understand the leadings of God per time, per season, per moment, may keep you stagnated for a very, very long time. And may tonight be a service of deliverance for someone. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for you that through my speakings, God is going to be speaking expressly to you. Maybe to a man of God, maybe to a couple, maybe to a family, maybe to someone. You just came at this point in your life. You don't even know if to go left or to go right or to remain there. You're not even sure of what to do. May you find direction tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. 
so I want you to pay attention write this down please to fulfill your assignment and your divine destiny to fulfill your assignment and your divine destiny you need to be guided and led by God to fulfill your divine assignment or your assignment and your divine destiny you need to be guided and led by God it is impossible ladies and gentlemen to actualize destiny to God's standard and God's specification outside of access to his guidance and his leading those we call great in the kingdom today are not great based on anything necessarily that they have within themselves they may be very weak people who have mastered the art of accessing the leadings of God and they triumph from one level of results even to the other why do we need the leadings of God even at such a time as this confusion is part of the limitations in all men confusion write that word down please confusion is part of the limitations in all men provided you are a man carrying flesh and blood and bones confusion is part of the limitations of all men it's not an insult it's an attempt to describe a state of man outside of the assistance of God I said to fulfill your divine destiny and your assignment you will need to access the guidance and the leadings of God and then that confusion is part of the limitations in all men hallelujah are we together now very very important you see in life please look up let me have your attention I wrote down here that our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current levels of exposure this is a fact with all men decisions decide destiny like dr mudok will say however your decisions are predicated upon the level of knowledge the orientation you have at any given time as powerful as that is it is a risk because your growth is transitory that means you can make a decision today using the level of orientation and knowledge you have today and only find out after 15 years that you did not make a superior decision it means then you have to outsource a dimension of intelligence that is higher than your level of exposure or your orientation are we together now it's amazing how that as you grow in leadership as you grow in age as you grow in life as you grow you know in in several kinds of responsibilities your priorities change is that true your orientation changes and so on and so forth i remember years ago as children there used to be this this hairstyle called punk my people remember and if the baba makes a mistake and ruins your one week by getting the measurement wrong and the styling wrong you can your one week can be ruined and frustrated because someone was not sensitive to the times but it is amazing right now that as i sit down for them to bar me usually i'm sleeping it takes a lot of patience from the barber because any opportunity to not do anything for five ten minutes is converted to sleep just bab whatever you need to bab and allow me prepare I'm just saying that our priorities change as we rise, as we grow in leadership. Are we together now? You can see a woman of 60 years old walking and her shoe cuts and she carries the one that is not working well and keeps walking. No embarrassment whatsoever. No explanation whatsoever. She will walk home with joy and confidence and say, Listen, look at what happened. I started trekking from here to this place but let that happen to a young lady of 21 22 23 and that is an attack she may even go for deliverance and say no it has to be the devil for this level of embarrassment 
if you look back at your decisions now 10 15 years ago i am sure from the lens of your growth your maturity your increase in knowledge there are many things you probably would not have approached the way you did is that true that means that depending on the scope of your understanding now to make all of your decisions is a risk because growth is progressive it means in the next five to ten years the world is going to change and you do not know how far it will change your knowledge is going to grow and increase and you do not know how far what what level of ignorance you have now you only test how bad your ignorance is in the presence of superior knowledge are we learning already we are very very limited as men I know that we are an arrogant species and it's not very easy for us to admit these kinds of things. But I am telling you, based on the integrity of scripture, all men are limited. Jeremiah chapter 1, give us 11 and 12, please. Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12 is my verse of emphasis. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen. That means a man can see wrongly. Is that true? To see means to perceive. For I will hasten my word to perform it, he says. In Luke chapter 11 from verse 34 and 35, Jesus was given a word of caution and he said, the light of the body is the eye. He said, therefore, when thine eye be single, thine whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. 35. He says, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness that means you can carry darkness for decades believing it is light until you see the true light hallelujah there is a desperate need for the leadings of God especially you see ladies and gentlemen when you get to a point in your life where you now become a leader over others when many people trust your intuition and they trust your leadership perhaps you are a ceo of a company here you are a man of god leading a ministry you are a father a mother you are a leader of every any kind of sort it is a risk to take steps in today's world with assumptions because you see you will not only destroy yourself you will destroy maybe tens hundreds thousands of others who follow you with unbending loyalty it is a risk to lead people using just instincts alone. This, all of these this emotional expressions are useful. But the reality of the times will require us to master the guidance and the leadings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. One of the things that defines a righteous man or, is, or a good man, as the Bible calls it, is the ability to have his steps ordered. Give us Psalms 37, please, 23 and 24. Psalms 37, 23 and 24. I pray this scripture for you in the name of Jesus. It says, the steps of a good man. The word good there in many other versions is a righteous man. The steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. Not just ordered by his brain, not just ordered by his age. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways. 24, it says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholded him with his hand. The steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord now you look at that against the scripture that says Proverbs 16 25 Proverbs 16 25 that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man someone says seemeth right one more time seemeth right but the end thereof are the ways of death you can see a path that looks like the path to victory the path to glory and you will religiously follow that path only to find out that you've gotten yourself in trouble i forbid that over your life in jesus name 
Does the Bible give us the portrait of what a life looks like when it is under the influence of the leadership of God? Yes. Deuteronomy 32 from verse 10 to 13. This is a biblical portrait of how God leads men and what happens to a life and a destiny that submits to the guidance and the leadings of God. Deuteronomy 32, 10, we are reading to 13. He found him in a desert land. So notice where he found him, in a desert land. And the Bible says, and in the waste, hauling wilderness, the waste hauling wilderness, he led him about, he instructed him, and kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on their wings. Verse 12. The Bible says, So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. That means there was no plan B. It was not God and a charm. It was not God and somebody somewhere. The Lord alone led them. And the Bible says, as a result, he made him to ride on the high places. Where did he find him? In the desert and in the wilderness. And by the leadings of God. Look where this man has arrived at now. He made him to ride upon the high places of the earth. That he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock. And oil out of the flinty rock. Use your imagination for a moment and compare this man. The man who is in the wilderness wallowing in confusion. Maybe under curses and all kinds of things. Versus a man right now hiding, riding on his high places. Experiencing increase in every dimension, sucking honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. May that be you in Jesus' name. You know, believe me, um, I've been concerned, especially over the last one week. Did you know that over 80% arguably of the emails and the text messages I receive is about people praying over financial conditions or some kind of conditions of stagnancy that is bringing pain, reproach, and embarrassment to their families. I had to take it to God in prayer to say, Father, please, something needs to be done to the body of Christ. This level of stagnation, this level of incapacitation does not bring glory to the Lord. It's because we're a generation that have over-depended on brain work and just the intellect as against the simplicity and the childlikeness of the leadings of God. He took him from a desert and began to lead him. The leadings of God will always look like foolishness until you begin to see the glory that comes from his leadings. There are many of you right now, you can literally trace your lives and your destinies to the leadings of God. You can look at where you were as a man of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes um, I, I was talking to a gentleman not too long. And when he told me the wonderful things that were happening in his life now and made reference to a few things I told him many years ago. I told him about the excellency of intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the ability to follow the leadings of God. And he was saying, Apostle, thank you. It didn't make sense then, but look what he's made out of my life now. You can know that you have submitted yourself to the leadings of God. Because please hear me, if it is the God of the Bible that leads you, I don't care what you meet on the way. The end of it will always be beauty and glory. God is speaking to someone because right now, you just know you are led of God, but Lord, where are we going? I do not know. Can I tell you, when God leads people, you can be sure he will take you from a desert. You see, when you are driving for over 98%, help that gentleman, for over 98% of the journey, you will not see your destination, but you need to trust the driver. For he leads you and guides you. To the city up above, he'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. God is leading you. 
And for those of you who are not sure, pay attention so that you can verify whether it is God leading you or is a demon spirit leading you. Because there are many people who are obediently following demon spirits, believing Satan can appear as an angel of light and manipulate your sincerity. There are many people today who believe it is God that is leading them. But the results we are seeing do not carry the signature of God. Use tonight's teaching to verify so that you can switch loyalty in case you have submitted to a false voice. Hallelujah. God leads men, but we need to understand what it takes and the dynamics of the leadings of God. What are the keys that we must engage if we want to be led of God and led by God? Tonight I will give us five and please every time I call us to pray because we're going to be praying as I teach I want you to pray with all your heart if and when I request that you do so it is true that God leads but you see God does not lead everybody unfortunately he wants to lead everybody everybody especially in Christ can have access to the guidance and the leadings of God but there are conditions that must be met. Otherwise, you can never truly enjoy the leadings of God. Are you ready? Write this down first in your heart before you pen it down on paper. Number one, the first key to enjoying the shepherdhood, the leadings of God, is admit that you are limited. Please write it down. The first key to enjoying and accessing God as your shepherd is to admit that you are limited. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible clearly tells us there that we, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, not 3, my apologies, 13 and verse orientation, you are still limited. We pride in all kinds of things. I've traveled to Europe, I've traveled to America, I have a PhD, and that is wonderful of person. The meek, the Bible says, will he guide in judgment? Not the needy, not the one who is in need of guidance. The meek, you know what it means to be meek? Meekness is a, is a spiritual quality, is a state of brokenness where you understand that I am limited. Another word for meekness is teachability. Hallelujah. The ability to be teachable lord i thank you for that which you have given me but i admit i do not know everything please give us that scripture again the meek will he guide in judgment and he says the meek will he teach his ways so could it be that the reason why many people are unable to access the leadings of god and the ways of god is because there is a desire to know but there is no meekness Admit that you are limited. As a man of God, admit that you are limited. As a businessman, admit that you are limited. Admittance is such a difficult thing for us, especially in our civilization today, because psychologically for many of us, we translate admitting limitations to mean that we are mediocre, to mean that we are not much. So everybody likes to give... Um, a give an attitude of invincibility to the degree to which you give a a picture of a superman that seems to be the degree to which a generation will listen to you and be loyal to you unfortunately as far as destiny is concerned that is absolute nonsense jesus who was the word incarnate as soon as he arrived by age 12 with no sense of shame and embarrassment he marched straight to the temple to go and learn you would think this was the person that the scripture was all about imagine jesus sitting in the temple and listening to them this was the word of god bound in earthly flesh i can imagine the doctors of the law saying do you understand this young man and he says yes sir 
the meek will he guide for someone here God is already speaking to you the reason why you have not been able to make progress is pride the inability to come before the Lord and say father I do not know much would you teach me what's that song spirit lead me where my trust help me let me walk of God you must admit that you are limited father thank you in spite of the Bible school in spite of the seminary in spite of all the books that I've read I, I come before you expressing my ignorance and my limitations except you lead me I cannot lead these great people you see why the request of Solomon touched the heart of God how do you come to a man in the night and now give him an open check Solomon would have said that there are five kings that have threatened me. Oh God, kill them for me. Give me rest. And Solomon said, I am but a young man. I do not have the ability to lead this so great a people. Would you grant unto your servant an understanding heart? And the Bible says God was impressed. He was touched. For someone here, if you will only humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, even now the remaining days of this year what god will do in your life will dwarf many years put together the meek will he guide there are many proud men of god there are many proud business people there are many people failing woefully and yet they will not listen and open up their heart to see the need to be guided there are people who are poor and broke and they will not listen. The moment you want to talk about money, they want to contribute as colleagues. You are not getting it. It's not working in your life. There are people who are not doing well in ministry. As a principle, any area I don't have so much result, I'm usually silent. I don't, I don't, I only speak from the abundance of knowledge with results. Our world today is full of commentators, commentators without results. When you know how football is and so just pass now the person who is talking now has not been able to achieve anything and yet he's insulting someone whose weekly payment is his lifetime desire are we together now you must admit someone is having a small business for instance maybe you, you are just selling two or three items and only five people come to buy it and now you are giving all kinds of i think Shoprite can do like this i think this one can these people they are not really very wise if it was me and yet you have your own result there and absolutely nothing is working can i tell you in the name of jesus i pray that anything that represents pride eating up your potential for rising to a, the next level i curse it from your life right now The meek will he guide in judgment there are people who don't know anything about marriage yet they are the first to comment on everything they are the first to give lectures and give all kinds of orientation there are people who don't know anything about finances and favor there is zero manifestation of favor not one not two zero and yet they can say anything about favor there are people who don't know jack about the anointing and yet they will want to teach you dimensions and dynamics and those who are really anointed are just hearing and watching the gap in knowledge garnished with pride Is God helping someone? You must admit that you are limited. That is not negative confession. It is not demeaning what God has done in your life. With brokenness, there is something I do not know. Lord, guide me. The meek will he guide. The moment I've taught you this, when God finds humility and finds brokenness, 
something there has to be something about this my financial situation I have done my best your best does not mean that is all to be done it is just the best you know based on your knowledge do you know let me tell you ignorance and pride can make simple things so difficult so difficult apostle i can drive okay let someone who can drive help you no 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 i've been driving for a long time it's just i've not had the opportunity to go to the road just give me the car you come back with two headlamps paul say it was just a slight mistake you cannot you are not getting this thing it's as simple as that apostle i can cook three hours you are still roaming around in the kitchen nothing is done nothing is set you are not even sure again of what you are doing it was just a mistake i think the stove or the the <clears throat> our standard of knowledge in this ministry is mastery until you are there you are not yet there don't say i know to what degree are we together now yes admit that you are limited as a man of god spirit of the living god i cry for your wisdom i admit i do not know i am limited i can learn i can do this but i am limited the lord is nigh them that call upon him humility number two very quickly is someone learning what is the second key to accessing the leadings and the guidance of god pray earnestly for divine direction pray earnestly for divine direction listen when it has to do with direction it is a risk to assume the devil can open a door for you that you will think it is god i've taught you even the prison has a door before you enter the prison a door must be open so just because a door is open you need to verify where that door is going there are some doors that are going into prison pray earnestly for divine direction first samuel chapter 30 and verse 8 first samuel 30 and verse 8 and david inquired of the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop i hope you know the man who is speaking was a warrior already had the arsenals to bring victory but he said no assumption shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and the lord answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover it is powerful when you are running with a sure word you don't see challenges on your way because you know that god listen it is vain it to wake up in the morning is that in your bible and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow just because you have money does not mean you should start business no the presence of capital is not a green light to start no we make all kinds of flimsy mistakes and we keep repeating it that's why god has sent you to the house of god can i tell you when you are physically prepared you stand the risk of making more mistakes because all the factors are there chances are excellent you will not respect the excellency of his voice shall i pursue shall i overtake and the lord says since you paid attention to my leadings go ahead and pursue you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all you must pray earnestly for divine direction and there are two ways you hear from god in prayer write it down please number one through the light from scripture so that will be two a light from scripture this is the first way god speaks to men in the place of prayer psalm 119 i believe verse 105 please give it to us thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path so god speaks to you by giving you light from scripture is someone learning now light from scripture in the place of prayer serious prayer not prayer and browsing 
not prayer and watching movie you are just watching the parts you don't like you quickly pray while you are with no no i mean heartfelt prayer when your spirit man is attuned pay attention to the scriptures that come sometimes they can be scriptures ordinarily you would not have remembered you see that but it just jumps up from the spirit is a time to write it down what could god be saying god speaks to us when we pray through the light that comes from scripture and then number two he speaks to us through the voice of his spirit isaiah 30 21 i hope you know god speaks to men yes he does and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left you shall hear a voice in john 16 and verse 13 please give us john 16 and verse 13 jesus was teaching and he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak so the holy spirit speaks he speaks, he guides. The Bible says the, the Spirit speaketh expressly. Pay attention to the speakings of God when you pray. Most times when you hear God and is not in the place of prayer, the margin of error is very, very wide. Let me tell you. Because you see the, the, the haziness that comes from the daily activities chances are excellent that what you thought you heard may not have been God so number one the first key to accessing the leadings of God is you must admit that you are limited and in need of his leadership number two you must pray earnestly for divine direction Number three, you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. You must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. One of the ways that God leads men is by granting them access to supernatural encounters. Please write it down. You must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions look up ladies and gentlemen can i tell you this i don't know what has happened to your dreams and visions but tonight in the name of jesus let there be a correction of it there are certain heights that when you get to and your dreams and visions have not been purified you will destroy yourself and destroy others dreams are powerful prophetic channels that communicate the leadings of god otherwise satan would not be interested in your dreams i can tell you he knows what is contained in dreams and visions genesis 41 let's read the first seven verses genesis chapter 41 please and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river, reading to seven. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed. And they fed in the middle. Uh-huh. Verse three. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river pharaoh is dreaming now and the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored one and pharaoh awoke he slept again and he dreamed the second time i hope you know this was a revelation of something that had a national economic implication so why would God choose to reveal something that had that gravity? I mean, a whole nation could be wiped in famine and God chose dreams. Respect dreams. 
Are we together? He dreamt the second time and behold, seven ears of corn came up on one stalk, rank and good, six. And behold, seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. Final verse now, it says, And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke and behold, it was a dream. There are many things that we have called dreams, but they are prophetic blueprints for the next two, three, four, five, ten years of our lives. Sometimes warnings, sometimes green lights. But because we have not been able to discern, next year I have a series on prophetic experiences, dreams, visions, angelic encounters. I want to teach you this thing so that you will understand. You have to be able to understand the place of dreams, visions, and even prophetic experiences. If you're learning, say amen. amen. In Exodus chapter 3, give us from verse 2 to 5. Exodus 3, 2 to 5. Watch this now. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the him being Moses now, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burnt with fire and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. It says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. While the bush... Help me now. My screen. While the bush is not burnt. Verse 4 now. It says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Verse 5. It says, draw, nigh, draw not nigh here. Put off thy shoes for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So he used a vision, a prophetic experience. Remember, that was the one encounter that turned a murderer to become a deliverer. Many have ignored supernatural encounters. In 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4, this was the encounter of Solomon now. Always inspires me every time I read this. The king went to Gibeon, the Bible says, and sacrificed there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. Verse 5, it says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How? So God can appear to men through dreams. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, in the dream, oh, God is asking him in a dream. He's replying in a dream. Imagine if you were Solomon's wife. You went to bed, honey see you in the morning, and while you are sleeping, turning east and west, and all the things people do when they are sleeping, you know, people can turn literally 180 degrees while they are sleeping and not even be aware. They just get up and know that the pillow is, people sleep in all kinds of interesting ways. While all that drama is happening, a man is encountering the God of the Bible in a very destiny-defining way. The wisdom that he would wake up with would be what would distinguish him as the wisest man that ever lived. And yet God chose a dream. Thou hast shown unto your servant great kindness and all of that and all of that. And he asks him for several things. Let's go to verse 13 for sake of time. Let's just do 13 to 16 and then we'll end. He answered him and said, Because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, I have given you understanding like no other person has got. And then he says, And I have also given thee, 13 now, that which thou hast not asked, both riches in the dream now. How do you give riches in a dream? How do you give honor in a dream? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all your days. 14. It says, And if thou wilt walk in my way, still in the dream, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Long life, still in the dream. Last verse, please. Of verse 15 now. And Solomon awoke. So it was a dream. And behold, again the Bible says, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings 
and made a feast to all his servants that means he said let's dance and rejoice and the people say wow the king is in a good mood not knowing that a transaction has happened in a dream could it be that throughout this year god has been trying to transact realities with men it is not only when you come to church like this ladies and gentlemen every time you go to sleep see it as an opportunity to step into a realm where destinies are defined because you do not know these demons are also waiting with their package it's like a menu fear intimidation and the moment you lay your head there you are in secondary school writing a demonic exam that you never pass or that never finishes and if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice going through those wicked experiences seeing yourself in a former house writing exams that never finish in the name of jesus christ i declare you are delivered right now only a shoe will ring forever to his kingdom there'll be no end in my life only a shoe will ring forever We can access the leadings of God when we are open to supernatural encounters. In Matthew chapter 3, please give us verse 13. This one disturbed me seriously because it concerned Jesus himself. I hope you know that when Jesus was born, he could die. I hope you know that. Matthew 2 from verse 13. The Bible says, Matthew 2, not 3, 2. 2 and verse 13 and when they were departed the magi now remember the magi came to just pay homage to jesus little baby jesus now baby jesus could die if he could not die god would not ask that they run away with him so don't just say jesus save sinners he had to be alive to be able to save sinners he was going to die but if he died as a baby, your sins will not be saved. That would just be obituary, not salvation. And when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. How? In a dream again. Saying, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Look at the exact, look at the, the details. Arise take the child and he told him where to go to he would have said arise and run away what if he ran to report to herod herod will say you are welcome there's a room here for you both you and the child wait there it's not enough to say god told me to move to where he he, he spoke to him he said arise and flee into egypt then here now he says and be thou there until I come to you again with a word my God may God restore the accuracy of his leadings may God restore the accuracy of his leadings in the name of Jesus Christ a man goes to bed Joseph was a weak ordinary man he would have died Jesus would have died and the entire plan of redemption would have been aborted when you see the excellency of their parenting it was not because they were superior parents they didn't go through parents counseling they only knew how to hear maybe god is speaking to a family here your ability to hear concerning your children will really be the key to their rising Thank God for all the intellectual systems that help to feed your mind. But nothing will replace the accuracy of the hearing of You can give birth to a child and God comes to you and say, This child is ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Take him to a missionary school in Lagos or in Abuja. You have heard the word. No matter what confusion comes, you will say, I know God said this. Keep that scripture, please. Remain there until I bring you word. And he told him why. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Next verse. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by the night 
and departed. How do you get up from a dream and do exactly what you saw? The kind of dreams we're having now, if you do everything in your dream, you would have been dead by now because our dreams are so weak and not purified by the power of God. You dream and you see yourself killing your mother. If you get up and do the same thing, wouldn't she die? You, you see how Satan has hijacked our dreams because of insensitivity. May there be restoration this night. You may say, okay, apostle, I'm not inclined towards the prophetic. I may not have the hearing eye and the seeing ear, but a dream is a blessing that God gave every man. All you need to do is to sleep. Please help them. Give us that scripture. Let's finish it, please. Now, verse 15. The Bible says, and he was there as he was directed by the dream until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, that out of Egypt I have called my son. Supernatural experiences. I shared with you my encounters when in 2013, I think it was, preparing and hoping, just trying to see if it was possible to come down to Abuja and the word of the Lord just came with a very serious encounter. A plane that lifted from Zaria, it was written e and I, on his way to Abuja. Just when it was about to land, it crashed. That one, the dream was straightforward. Are we together? It was the reason why in 2018, when the Lord came to me and began to speak to me about moving to Abuja, it took me three years. I struggled with the voice of God. Verifications upon verifications because destinies will be part of that decision. There are decisions you don't make carelessly except you are selfish. Hallelujah. There are people who just get up and say, I feel like leaving my job. What happens to your five children? How do you feel like leaving your job? I feel like driving my wife. I feel like having three more children. You see, we, we, we don't listen to God and you find out that the three more children you have are the ones that give you headache because God said, stop, you didn't hear. Are we together? It's an uncomfortable message tonight, but open up your heart to listen. Please open up your heart to listen because we are going to pray tonight. And one of the prayer points will be purify my experiences so that there are no confusions. Every access that the devil has to my dreams and my visions because I don't have time. I'm not teaching on this. I'm just teaching it as a byproduct of the leadership of the spirit. Otherwise, I would have told you there is something called lying visions. Many today are sincere victims of this. A combination of your emotions and an advantage that demons have taken and many people are being manipulated today it is maritally financially there are people in all kinds of confusions this is why we need to understand the accuracy and the leadings of God there are lying spirits that spoke to people in dreams your father is about to die that company is yours and the boy just sits down and is waiting every day I know what I had there are people today you see by reason of what I do I am amazed at the things people do and the confidence they have they tell you that God spoke to me and when you vet them you will truly know they had from the spirit except that by judging from the lens of scripture it was something else but as far as their conviction is concerned they had the right to be that convicted because of the clarity of what came to them. But when you judge it from the lens of scripture, it was not God. Please listen carefully. And you can be a prophet and still be in error. Just follow me. I'm a good pilot. We are flying high, but we'll land safe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural encounters. I know somebody that I once prayed and ministered deliverance to a lady this lady got up and started running out of the house going to some river and you know and she said voices speak do you know how many people have committed suicide today and they will tell you a voice said kill yourself 
kill your wife no you judge the speakings of God against the integrity of scripture but ladies and gentlemen if you have not opened up your heart to the realm of dreams and visions there is a dimension of the leadings of God that you may be robbing yourself of and we're going to pray tonight some of you do not have access to dreams it's the blessing and a privilege to all the saints in Christ and some of you our dreams have been corrupted all kinds of spirits have manipulated our dreams we lie down and we get up and have all kinds of leadings we follow those leadings sincerely but the end result shows that it was not God is someone learning number four how do we access the voice of God what are the many ways that the Bible teaches what is one of them number three supernatural encounters number four are you ready now one of the ways that God leads us in principle is through counsel from authorities especially spiritual authorities please write it down counsel You can access the leadings of God by opening up yourself to receive counsel from spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, elders, men with results and experience, they all form part of this group and they have earned the right to be able to give counsel. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1. Follow me patiently as we read the proverb of Solomon the son of David king of Israel verse 2 it says to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding three to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity verse 4 to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion that is the intent of the book of Proverbs now it says the wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Verse 6. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. 7. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 8. My son, a father is speaking to a son now. Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Is someone learning? Verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. That means they will bring you honor. My son, if sinners entice thee, this is counsel coming from a father, consent thou not. Next verse. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood let us lock privily for the innocent without cause this is a young man naively exploring life and destiny and the father is saying these are the options you will find on the way when you see these options manifest remember the counsel of a father he said consent thou not 12. let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit we shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with spoil. 14. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. 15. Now we're reading to 19. It says, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. God is speaking to a son through the wisdom of authority. Refrain thy foot from their path. It says, verse 16. For their feet run to do evil and make haste to shed blood 17 surely in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird do you know what that means when you put a a um, what they call it a net a bird has had access to a higher altitude and it can see he's saying one who is open to counsel is like a bird that is higher than the limitation that put that that the devil the trap that he puts for you verse 18 and they lay wait for their own blood and lock privily for their own lives. The last verse now, 19. It says, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. 
counsel from a father to his son this is my counsel to you as you sojourn you are going to meet this and that and that options but every time you are presented with these options the lord is speaking to you through my voice can i tell you many people have been saved from disaster because of counsel counsel is powerful counsel is powerful there is nobody who should ever outgrow the need to be counseled. Are we together? Again, this is where the pride of a generation comes in. And then what the Bible calls vain glory. We feel because I have achieved this and that and that, we are not open to counsel. Counsel is very, very important. Every time I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith, or anybody who has accomplished something that I consider to be a voice or a stakeholder in my life, I listen very carefully. I ask intelligent questions and my heart is opened to receive, to hear what they say. Even if I don't exactly see things that way, at least I give it a listening ear. Oh, do ministry this way. Do this this way, okay? I listen. Albeit I will go to God in prayer, but I, I, I respect results when I hear. Counsel from spiritual authorities. When you are open to receive counsel, then you will access the leadings of God. Sometimes God will not come directly. It may not be through a dream. It may be through one wise counsel. Gentlemen, the way you are doing ministry, you are not going to get credibility this way and you will not rise. Take away this, take away that. Do ministry with integrity. This is how it is done. I remember a gentleman who came and met me and this guy had posters as if he was coming out for election. I said, what is this? He said, I'm beginning a ministry. I said, from nowhere, my brother come. Let me save you pain. What in the world is this? That's not how we do ministry. You just come out from nowhere and carry posters and keep giving people by the roadside and believe that you will do ministry? No, that's not how it is done. And I showed him from scripture that when God leads people, he leads them step by step and he gives them territories little by little. He said, lest you occupy an empty territory that you do not have the capacity to fill. You see that? When God moves people, he moves people by growth, little by little. You will see a young man that has never bought a bicycle. He just comes and apostle, I saw a Range Rover somewhere. I know God is a God of speed. Speed is not foolishness. You go gradually. Do you know what it means to maintain a car at that level? How much do you have? See, this is how, and men of God, we have to be wise and help people. Don't just pray about everything because they say you should pray about. It can be a chance to give them wisdom. Hallelujah. One time a gentleman met me, not, not in Abuja, and he said he wanted to use a particular stadium for a program. And I just laughed. He said, wow, what a powerful zeal and revelation. But you are about to pay the price. Most likely you will be in the prison. Most likely. I can already plot the graph of the pathway of that foolishness because he will most likely borrow money. He will most likely meet liars. He will not even know which organization. He does not even have the influence to confront the authorities that will give him access to the use of the place. So most likely, it's not prophecy. Most likely, just by the pathway of wisdom, you can know that that gentleman is about to destroy his ministry. Apostle, I know what I saw. Yes. Respect what you saw, but bring it to the table of counsel. Counsel is powerful. Let me tell you. I used to criticize men of God years ago when I started, not, not in a sarcastic way, but I just used to talk, you know, the zeal of trying to establish doctrine. It was an old woman that came one time after listening to me, she just called me and said, listen, my son, you are going very far. And by the time you start talking about men of God, you have not gotten to their level to know the challenges and the pressures that they have. So manage this with wisdom. That was a big deliverance in my life big deliverance you will never hear me talk out of sarcasm i may challenge wrong doctrines but my honor for the body of christ for authority for men and women of god is one of the greatest key that has opened my credibility across the body of christ because of one counsel is god speaking to someone 
You may be running around trying to meet prophets, whereas your own mother carries the wisdom of the ancient. You have not sat down to say, Mama, I know you're a CEO flying across the world, but could it be one counsel Mama can give you? She didn't go to school, I know, but the wisdom of God resides with her. Is someone learning? Open up yourself for counsel. And when you are listening to people who have results counseling you, even if you don't agree, keep quiet. Respect and honor their speakings. You can go back and cross-check and edit like the Berean. But at the point, never sit with someone who has results and be discussing as colleagues. It is foolishness. Please hear what I'm telling you. Don't say, I'm a doctor. We are all doctors. You just graduated. You are yet to get a job. This man has been a professor of medicine for 23 years, maybe before you were born. Ah, uh, sir, you know, I, I, there's something I need. And the person is watching you. When great people keep quiet and watch you, start praying. Because it means that they have seen that there's no hope talking to you again. I hope someone is getting wisdom in church. Listen to what I'm telling you. For some of you, you have ignored an opportunity to rise. Because when you sit down with the great, you sit down with pride and arrogance. Let me hear, you know, let me tell you this. I don't claim I know so much, but it is stupid for you to say I don't know anything. No. There are many people I talk with in ministry and the rest. And sometimes I'm speaking with them. This person does not have any results. And yet you see the person just talking. You are suffering. Doors are not opening. You think all it takes to ministry is preaching? Good luck. <laughs> a mediocre world is very small you can go around it in a moment and not see a need to expand your mind are we together counsel for someone you need to write a list of all the things that are not working in your life and trust God for grace why is my business not working I've been in ministry I'm a person of integrity and I love the Lord don't just say pray for me I know if you declare one word all the trouble your foolishness just goes with one word you need counsel it took you years to build that kind of mindset what makes you believe one prophetic declare declaration will just take away losing you, there are wrong relationships you need to cut away from there is a reorientation and an approach to life and ministry and business you need to learn the law of honor there are many things you need to learn what makes you believe one prophetic prayer will just magically take you there no some of you have had access to great people and you abused it because of foolishness you need more than prayer you need counseling I'm hard tonight, ba. Sorry, oh, but listen, listen. It's from a heart of love. This is what should happen in the body of Christ. I am one believer who believes in translating spirituality to a context that improves your life, where you can go back and bring results, results that are potent, results that work. For someone, you may need to call someone and say, I'm so sorry. I, I downplayed your counsel in spite of the results that you have given my sincere apologies even if you do not agree with great men do not fight them respect their opinions you can live quietly are we together now years ago a man came to me and he wanted me to pray and um, it was about a financial issue because his children he was not able to pay for their your, their needs and he was getting frustrated and he said apostle you, you need to help me. And I was trying to explain to him. I said, no, 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 no. And then he made a statement. He said, you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children. Then I looked at him with pity mixed with honor. <laughs> if two children are giving you this kind of headache, and you see somebody leading a ministry like this 
and you are saying to you you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children <laughs> there is nothing sustainable that is by luck just have that at the back of your mind you can have short-term success by luck but there is nothing sustainable that is by luck believe me maybe God is speaking to a politician here you are about to start and someone has been in politics even if the person has not succeeded he has failed enough to be able to help you respect failure as much as you respect success in fact fear people who have not failed they are too they are too innocent to counsel you there is a requisite level of failure you must carry as a badge to balance your understanding in counseling people Believe me, anybody who comes to you with 100 over 100 is still a child in the school of success. There, there is a requisite scar that gives you a balanced perspective. Have you failed enough to be able to talk to me? Don't tell me all the stories. I just prayed and the person was healed. I just spoke and they gave me an auditorium. You are not the person to counsel me. I respect you. Carry your results until you learn the other side of life. My goodness there are people that have failed enough and they can talk to you when they talk to you they utter from their pain their pain has been turned to wisdom every sentence is a life lesson when you find failures who have become successful respect them beyond the results you see a man who tells you I came to Abuja here and for five years I did ministry wrongly I met false prophets I dabbled my hands into so many things but thank God today I'm walking in integrity sit down quietly with a notebook and learn how to do ministry right a woman who tells you I've been barren for 10 years now God gave me three sets of twins forget the twins and learn wisdom don't just respect crowns, respect scars. The wise respect both scars and crowns. Can I encourage someone? Your failure is still an asset. Don't throw it, archive it. It will be one of the qualifiers for your speaking to people tomorrow. Ah, God is speaking to someone tonight. Help that woman, please. Apostle, I have cried. I have failed in life. I know what it means to be an irresponsible father. Don't throw that experience. Archive it. One day you will use from that wisdom and mentor an arrogant young man who thinks life is so easy. Most times when we are starting out in life, because of the leverage of prayer, the prophetic, or generally life just playing games with you you can believe life is so easy and you are wondering so why are people crying like this I just got married and three months it's been so rosy in fact my wife is the best thing that has happened to me and you go online and embarrass yourself and someone who has been married for 15 years he said may God help you after two years you just turn and start saying life is unpredictable all this this unwise things that people do But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. for someone do not just respect those who have succeeded alone respect those who have failed not everybody fails respect those who have failed failure is an asset 
when you can turn it to power. Paul said, let no man trouble me. It is not only anointing that I have, there are scars. Man of God, that you failed the ministry and came here and sat down now. I know men will laugh at you and say you don't have results. Don't worry. There is a story through your pain that only you can give. There is a time that destiny will make a roll call. Where are those who have failed? Come forward. And you will be the only one to be able to stand and come out. Because your failure has earned you a place in destiny. You know what it means to be attacked. You know what it means to be barren. You know what it means to do ministry for one year without anybody sowing into your life. Gentlemen, don't just look for those who live in mansions. Go and look for mama and let her teach you the secret of happiness in a hut. There is something you need to learn because the money you think will come from the mansion, you will be surprised. You don't know the depression and the drugs that surround those mansions. Sometimes you need to learn from both a king, but you need to learn from the slave that is in his palace. There is something the slave can tell you that even the king does not know. The slave is the one who cleans the palace. He knows what he has seen there. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. He is my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. That will be somebody's song. That you're my glory. The lifter up of my head. Mama, you may be struggling with four children and none of them seems to have been great. Let them laugh at you. There is a story only you can tell. Continue being diligent, training the children. Let the naysayers keep gossiping. Shame on her. Four children, nobody rising. Don't worry. Let them celebrate their success while you celebrate the art of turning failure to success. Why will the Lord speak to a young virgin through an angel and says, Mary, you are highly favored. And the next thing that follows that woman is pain, controversy. There was nothing in the life of Mary that I have seen that looked like favor. An angel comes from heaven and says, you are highly favored. I would expect the king to call her and say, I had a dream. There is free land for you. As soon as Jesus is born, you become tax free. That sounds to me like favor. So God calls scar favor. He calls controversy favor. He calls pain favor. Why would you say a woman is high? Ah, God is speaking to someone. Don't listen. You may cry, but don't be embarrassed about your failures again. There is glory through the scar. There is something about the speaking of God, Ba, that until you are at your lowest moment, there is something about the voice of God you cannot hear. There is, there is a pain requirement to hear certain things about God. Tonight's message is very deep. For some of you, you really will not understand it this night. You are too innocent. You have been shielded by the sacrifices of others. You may not really understand this. There is a pain requirement that brings out the clarity and the purity of the voice of God. There is a way a man of God fails and fails and fails in ministry 
that he goes back and he says Lord teach me when he writes a book about the leadership of the spirit read it that pain has purified any flesh and the need to make a name it's gone that is the reason why when people go through things and they come out of it they usually come out with an anointing barren for 16 years laughed at by people as she gets triplex it's not only children she got the day she speaks over you she will terminate barrenness in a moment because every time she sees you like the high priest she's touched with the feelings of your infirmity let me tell you the truth you see many of you see today that i pray for people and i'm just speaking and you see the power of god it's not only prayer and anointing no there is a pain requirement that has reached down to the bowels of power and has drawn genuine, authentic spiritual power. When I see oppression, I know because I have been oppressed. Counsel. 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 Is someone hearing? You may need to humble yourself. Seek counsel. Godly counsel. Not on wise counsel. Sit down. There has to be a way about my life. Speak to me, God. Speak to me. Speak to me. Ministry has to work. This thing between me and my wife, we are beating ourselves every day. And then everybody will enter his room personally and pray in tongues. It shouldn't be like that. Where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, the kingdom is here. I lay down my own place to carry on new fire today. The first time we had our crusade, we were owing, we were not much, things did not go well. I knew it was a process, but I said, Lord, we cannot do ministry this way. No, I don't want to live a life where you are preaching and you are owing, you are in trouble. Many people are, are dying right now. There are many preachers that cannot stand on stage and preach. People just fall down and die like that because of a pile of problems. And I said, I don't want to have to manipulate people. I, I'm going to encounter a lot of wealthy and influential people. Why do I have to change my sermons because I want to attract favor? There has to be a way. Through desire, a man having separated himself. Please hear me. For someone right now, what you are hearing from me is not just a preacher. It is pain giving you counsel. Man of God, the way you are doing ministry, you are only going to end up in jealousy and pain and you will join the queue of frustrated people and you will think everybody went to collect charm from a herbalist. Retrace your step and go back through the power and the dignity of kingdom integrity. Dig that well and find treasures that last. Are we learning? This is more than preaching tonight, oh. This is the Spirit of God speaking to you. There are many of you, you need to stop what you're doing now. Stop that business, stop that contract, whatever. Just stop and seek counsel. Because your continuing it is about to reschedule another season of pain. Listen to me. Time does not turn ignorance to knowledge. Time does not turn pain to joy. You must bridge time with wisdom. Are we together? Seek counsel. I thought I had God, but the five areas I thought I had God, none of them has produced the result that I want. I think I need to go back and find out. I may be missing something about hearing God. I thought God said I should start ministry. But I started and it looks like it's not God. Let me go back again. Three days before Koinonia would start in Abuja here, I was still on a retreat, re-verifying again. God, please, is it you? Look beyond my humanity and let me hear from you again. 
if it is not you I will cancel it let's finish up so number four counsel from spiritual authorities number five the fifth platform that is available to access the leadings of God is the prophetic ministry this will be my last for tonight and I want you to please pay attention the prophetic ministry both the office of the prophetic and then revelatory gifts the prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry given by God to the body of Christ because when you look beyond the imperfections and the imbalances around the prophetic the prophetic is a mysteriously powerful tool that can bring rest and direction comfort to a man within a moment age-long confusion and captivity can come to end in a moment if and when the prophetic is at, is at, is administered within its jurisdiction of relevance an example of the power of the prophetic reflecting the leadings of God first Samuel chapter 10 beginning from verse 1 to 7 please first Samuel 10 1 to 7 this was the encounter between Saul and prophet Samuel the Bible says then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head the he being Saul and kissed him and said is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance verse 2 when thou art departed from me today you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelda and they will say unto thee the asses which thou wentest to seek have been found and lo thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you saying what shall I do thinking his son had been devoured maybe by a beast or so verse 3 then thou shalt go forward that's the assignment of the prophetic it helps you to go on forward from thence and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine verse 4 it says and they shall salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive of their hands five and after that you shall come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with the psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them and they, sh and they shall prophesy verse 6 now it says and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man the last verse it says and let it be when these signs are come unto you that you shall do as occasion serves you because they have become proof that God is with you the prophetic ministry is very very powerful because of its unique ability to access the eyes and the ears of the spirit and to reach into the past and to re reach into the future transport spiritual realities and bring it to you now there are two dimensions of the prophetic as you may have learned foretelling that has to do with declaring things before they happen and forth telling declaring things to make them happen one is revelatory another is creative you need to know this are we together two dimensions two levels of the prophetic there is the prophetic that declares happenings events before they happen it is revelatory there is the prophetic that declares things to make them happen it is creative both are dimensions of the prophetic but now I'm particularly talking about the revelatory dimension of the prophetic another example of this we find maybe for time's sake we may not really be able to read everything is the story of a man prophet called Elisha King Ben Haddad and then one of his boys called Hazael you find that in 2nd Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 
second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 elisha came to damascus and ben hadad the king of syria was sick the bible says it was told him saying the man of god is here verse 8 and the king said unto hazael hazael was like an aid to him take due present in the hand and go and give the man of god and inquire of the lord he said inquire of the lord but through the prophetic shall i recover from this disease are you seeing why kings in ancient times were great because they didn't take chances they took advantage of the prophetic so hazael went to meet elisha now and gave him a present even every good thing of damascus 40 camels burden can you imagine just to inquire of a prophet And he said, Thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? This is where I want you to lend me your attention now. Pay attention. See the power of the prophetic. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say to him, Thou mayest certainly recover. But Hazael, let me tell you the truth. I have seen it. He shall die. He said, Listen, I don't want to break his heart. Just tell him he shall recover. But I will tell you the truth. I have seen it as a prophet he shall die now 11 is where my story begins Elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed and he started crying after telling Hazael that Elisha now starts to cry and Hazael verse 12 looks at him and he says my Lord why are you crying and he said because I have seen the evil that you Hazael will bring you are going to set their strongholds on fire. There are young men you will slay with a sword. You will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child. Can you imagine? The prophet was saying, I'm weeping because you, Hazael, as innocent as you look as a messenger now, I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king. I am warning you now. Hear what he said. Hazael, verse 13, Hazael said, but what is your servant a dog that he shall do this great thing? You see, the prophetic has reached into the future and he said, young man, you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain. Your loyalty is not genuine. It's just because you are in a condition, you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace. I have seen that there is evil in your heart. Instead of the man to say, pray for me, I don't know my tendencies in the future. He said, the Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria. When you read that story, the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king, he was cruel and he was wicked. Everything Elisha said that he said he would not do, he did. The prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say, don't throw him completely. There is a prophet in him. The prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say, this boy needs counseling. He said, no, 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 he's my finest of sons. He said, you don't know what this gentleman can become. The prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the careers do not even know is resident within their heart. There is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture, and with the lips of prophets some ignored some received now the prophetic sadly just like the apostolic also has had his abuses and imbalances because you see the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly everyone wants a sense of security and certainty it's a psychological need so if i prophesy to you right now and I'm, I'm not just declaring i call your name and i tell you tomorrow one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody you see you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow the next time i say don't travel you will not travel because the memories of the results from the last prophecy this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of christ especially the prophetic community into slaves these are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect 
the prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces and if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear God sincerely you can turn God's people into animals there are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic there are children there are people who have gone out of the will of God because they came to honor the prophetic so as much as I talk about the prophetic it should never be ignored but I can tell you there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic before I receive from you as a prophetic as a prophetic person there are many things I need to look at number one I need to look at the strength of your consecration number two I need to look at your prayer life number three I need to see the supremacy of the Word of God at work in your life if I do not find these things I do not trust your speaking what you say does not have to be inaccurate the margin of error is wide too wide to be received it is not the correctness of what you say that makes you an accurate prophet and it is not the falsehood of what you say that makes you a fake prophet are we together many of us right now sadly have been victims of the prophetic the prophetic is powerful but there are many people who left jobs they should not have left you ask them why did you leave the job he said, a prophet came and told me, you have the call of God, get out of that. Someone will come and say, your wife is a witch. For instance, I'm not being sarcastic. You know I love the body of Christ. And I love the prophetic community too. Imagine as a husband, you go somewhere and someone secretly calls you. And because there's some kind of witchcraft manipulation, maybe in your wife's family, and that person is not sound with the word to be able to discern what he has seen properly. He now says, Oga, you have been staying with a witch in your house. I wish you good luck. Imagine you are such a man, ladies and gentlemen, and you get home and your wife is happy, makes her hair ready to receive you and gives you a big hug and say, honey, I prepared a special meal for you. Uh-huh. Special meal. Everything you hear, you will relate it from the lens of that prophetic. What makes the meal special? What have I not eaten in these 10 years of marriage? You want to kill me? Let me just say it. And you see, fight starts there. There are people who in one day, their entire theology can come to naught because of the presence of the prophetic. We must embrace the prophetic. Some of you here may have been disappointed by the prophetic ministry. But let me tell you the truth. Do not make the mistake that many are making to throw away the prophetic and say it is unnecessary. The prophetic till Jesus comes will play an active role in destiny actualization. However, I must tell you, the prophetic must submit to the supremacy of the word of God because the prophetic, if not managed, especially by individuals who do not have consecration and character, it is going to turn men into beasts. It will cause more havoc than it will cause redemption. Are we together? In Acts chapter 11, we're about to pray. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. The Bible talks about a very powerful prophet called Agabus. It says, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem. Came what? Prophets. So in the New Testament, there were prophets, not just one. Came prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. Verse 28. And there stood up one of them called Agabus and signified by the spirit that there will be great famine across the world. Are you seeing the prophetic now? The Bible says which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. 29. We're reading to 30. Then the disciples, every man, according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Verse 30 now which they also did and sent to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. That means in a meeting like this, prophets came to Antioch and one of them called Agabus got up and said, listen, God has shown me something that there is coming a famine. How?
how many prophets across the globe cried and began to warn that there will be recession there will be wars first the prophecy of scripture that when the end time is about to come nations will rise against nation is that true that kingdoms will rise against kingdom it is not new it is in your bible but the bible says in matthew 24 that this is only the beginning of the birth pangs i have said it again no matter what kind of fight happens in the world it is not war that will bring jesus back there is only one sign that brings jesus back this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and then the earth the end will come everything happening today on earth has happened before the thing that was is the thing that is and the thing that is is the thing that is to come there is nothing new under the sun is it famine women ate their children it's not even gotten that bad is it third world nations becoming first world nations is it advanced nations retrogressing is it leaders being corrupt is it corrupt leaders repenting is it national redemption everything we are seeing is already captured in the prophetic dimension of scripture but additionally there have been men and women that god has raised across the globe who have heralded some with uncanny precision the unfolding of events many have been ignored historically men and women have always made it a duty to persecute their saviors there are many men and women of god who have warned many have warned in business in ministry here agabus warned and said so and so would happen let's see one more prophecy of agabus acts 21 from verse 10 and 11 Agabus had the courage to even warn Paul, mighty Paul. He says, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea again a certain prophet named Agabus. 11. The Bible says, and when he was come to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that owned this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the gentiles what he said was the truth but paul said listen i will go through that risk on account of the gospel i am surrounded by a very prophetic community you can imagine when you are connected to people across the globe there will be a deluge of prophetic words day and night streaming from everywhere and it is my duty under God to use the lens of scripture and decipher that which is for my reception and that which I will ignore. But it will be the biggest foolishness of anyone even in this end time to throw the baby and the bath water and say I do not need any prophetic word. In the midst of all the false prophecies, make sure you don't throw the true one that comes as a bailout system. Hallelujah. God has used me to bring prophetic direction to people and to ministries, to leaders and to kings. I have been directed by myself, myself, by the privilege of the prophetic. I have seen all shades, I have seen all dimensions of the prophetic, believe me. Maybe not all, but I mean I've seen, I've seen, I, I mean that I've seen a vast dimension of the prophetic. I've had the honor of sitting with people, I just returned from Ghana, and you know I, I think the archbishop is probably one of the spiritual leaders on earth that i know that has raised about the highest diversity of the prophetic community i know you see that is the truth and so when i have the opportunity to sit with them like this usually i would discuss what about the prophetic do i need to learn and i, I could not imagine through my times you know and the relationship with him the the level of spiritual orientation i have received alone about the operation of the prophetic many people who teach about the prophetic are not prophets just because you prophesy does not mean you are a prophet there is the prophetic office given to a man Hallelujah. 
we need to pray for all the prophetic and then by extension the apostolic community in this nation and on earth because the prophetic and the apostolic community is much needed but these are the two groups of people that have received the greatest attack by the devil the greatest character flaw has come from these two offices greatest mismanagement in ministry has come from these two offices everyone who is truly called into the apostolic and the prophetic demands and desires your prayer including the person speaking to you you have no idea of the attack that is schemed at the prophetic and the apostolic because of the sensitive nature of the assignment hallelujah we need the prophetic god has called you to be a prophet here your first assignment is to be careful don't go around harassing people with your limited knowledge there are people who come to church and when everybody is seated they start moving from row to row you are sarah no 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 i'm grace so, well one day you'll be called sarah that's what i mean you are a liar you are lying there instead of you to repent and go back and retrain yourself it doesn't mean you are false what kinds of gimmicks and games if you are not hearing you are not hearing you can grow are we together or those who go to families and harass people you just knock the door peace be unto this house and you say well i've been instructed to come and pray with you and have a vigil you have all kinds of problems and you start harassing people one of the biggest mistakes of the prophetic is mammon 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 you mix the prophetic and money you are going to destroy yourself maybe god is speaking to someone here there is wealth with the prophetic but not by manipulation the moment you start asking people bring money bring this bring that bring money so that i will see for you so that i will hear for you it's just by the mercy of god now please don't go around condemning people remember both good and bad we are all growing god is helping us so this is not for you to carry tonight's message as a weapon and go and say as you are talking now i already know the person i will call and you go and call somebody and say listen now you have been deceiving me bring all my money all the money 11 million in all return one by one. that's not what i'm teaching you but you must be very careful the prophetic we must restore the accuracy of priesthood and the sanctity of priesthood are we together there is nothing wrong in blessing a man of God, sowing into a man of God's life. There is nothing wrong with a man of God challenging you to give, provided it's within the boundary of integrity. The moment you start playing games and you start scheming and now start adding a lot of prophetic manipulations. And then one of the, the corruptions of the prophetic is employing extra biblical practices alongside the prophetic even if authentic this is one of the things that has downplayed the purity of the prophetic again like I said when I teach I teach from a standpoint of love it is only God that knows what he has told people it's not my assignment to condemn but it's my assignment to bring God's people to order using the reference of doctrine are we together now yes there is no amount of prophecy you will receive that has not had its parallel in scripture nations were prophesied to by a man and in 24 hours things change so by the time people start sending you to do all kinds of things you know i don't want to start mentioning you know the things that i'm talking about there has to be a lot of care and caution now there are prophetic signs there are prophetic tokens yes it is very possible jesus washed put mud in the eyes of someone and said go to salome and wash an angel came and stirred the water in bethesda i understand these things but there is a way that you operate that it is outside of the jurisdiction of scripture you are going to lead people into perdition hallelujah but as far as the leadings of god is concerned i'm praying even this night that god will raise a caliber a new generation of prophets in Nigeria and Africa that will be a correction of the mistakes past in the name of Jesus Christ 
most of the apostolic and the prophetic community I say again the challenge is usually lack of character mammon pride in many parts of Africa, the crop of prophets that is just a, a, a product is, is almost a mess. It's not even something to talk about, sincerely. And many are gifted genuinely in terms of the gifting, my goodness. But as beautiful as the gift is, it comes with such an ugly life and a, dispos a disposition that it cancels out the beauty and the purity. The prophetic, the gift will attract people to you. It is your character and stability based on scripture that now glorifies Jesus. Are we together? By the time I prophesy to you and you say, oh, man of God, that's true. You have a company like this. I say, yes, you earned 150 million this month. Yes, sir. How did you know? I say, now, now that I've seen that amount, you will be mistaken to think that prophecy, that prophecy will finish with just telling you that amount. Go and carry 30 million if you don't want to die. Rush with it and stand in front of my office tomorrow. You just bought a Jeep. Yes, sir. How many? Three. Carry two. First to my house. You have 10 houses. Yes. What are you doing with 10 houses? Oh, God just said I should build. Did he tell you one is for you? No, all those kinds of things. I'm not being sarcastic, but we need to repent. When I say we, I add myself in it. Whether you are innocent or not, when you are addressing the body of Christ, you must include yourself in it too. You don't stand from a standpoint of self-righteousness and say we, and say them. Mm -mm. I don't do tell them. If one fails, all of us failed. If one succeeds, all of us succeeded. Are we together? But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is my prayer that through you or around you that God will send authentic prophetic voices haven't told you some of these negative parts of the prophetic I submit to you by God the day you are privileged to have access to the accurate and accurate prophetic office balanced with scripture with character accuracy in hearing you will a, your lifetime can be downloaded in a moment and you will get up with you will start running like the foxes of Samson you will now know that the reason why you have been marking time is because of lack of hearing there are people who have who have achieved so much in destiny in one year than many have done within two decades because the prophetic God used the prophetic to give them wisdom as much as I prophesy to people, I am a very principal beneficiary of the prophetic. You see, my coming to Abuja, in addition to what God told me, God used a lot of prophets and some of them with precision I cannot begin to tell you. With accuracy and precision, almost every new season of my life that is about to unfold, there has to be one prophet across the globe somewhere, maybe connected by relationship or even total strangers that God reveals to them. And some of them come with the sincerity of heart and bring that word and it just opens up doors. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Koinonia, please hear me. This end time demands sensitivity in understanding the leadings of the Spirit. If you really want to actualize destiny, for some of us, after this service, you need to use this week to at least have a one day retreat and say, Lord, the way business is not working for me, speak to me what am i not doing well what am i not getting well or are you even in this in the first place when you call on him he will answer if god has helped you here to be a man of god or to be a prophet please i beseech you by the message of god if you don't have an answer to people's problems be secured enough to give them intelligence from scripture but don't be under pressure to tell lies there are many times people come to meet me and say, Apostle, I know 
And you know, those are the kinds of statements that now massage your ego and you are now tempted to lie. Apostle, I, I traveled all the way from America. I'm here right now. And I knew the moment I see you, one word. Aha. Uh -huh. And you now say, okay. Um, now that you have, you have encouraged me like that, how in the world do I tell you I will go and think about it? And that is why even genuine people, I hope you know lying is not falsehood, it's just sin. Many accurate prophets have lied. The same way many false prophets have told the truth. Hallelujah. We don't lie because we are false. We lie because we are human. He said God is not a man that he should lie. When they met Balaam, remember that? Let's not go there. Let me just talk about something else. Let me encourage maybe servants of God who are following or those who are here. Please do not be under any pressure to tell lies. If it is something you need to pray about, you can tell the people, please give me some time and let me pray. You may need to consult like doctors do. You see, a doctor will say, okay, allow me. This is new. In my 35 years of practice, I've not seen it like this. Let me call another colleague in India or another colleague somewhere and just send the samples and let's look at it and compare notes. But it's only men of God who are proud. We are know it all. We sit down and die and tell lies rather than just opening your heart to say, listen, I, I may not have clarity about this issue, but let another person speak. Hallelujah. People have lied about election. People have lied about, about uh, the economics. People have lied about so many things. We need to be very careful and not get under pressure. But let me encourage you, do not be a slave to the prophetic. Open up your heart to receive the prophetic within the jurisdiction of his relevance. But hear me, this is what will keep you to the end. The voice of a prophet, no matter how accurate. I hope you know there are many things God said in the Bible that did not come to pass. It does not make, make God a fake prophet. Many, many things he said would come to pass. For instance, it is his desire that all men get saved. Are all men saved? There are people going to hell every day. Is that true? The Lord is my shepherd. We have come thus far by the leadings of the Spirit. I cannot begin to give you instances of the leadings of the Spirit. It's December now, and one of the things I hope to teach you before this year wraps up is the power of retreats. Most of us do not know how to hear a word from the Lord and then to run with it. It is risky to just celebrate Christmas alone. Beautiful Christmas tree, by the way. Let's appreciate our lovely people and the flowers here. Hallelujah. But if all you are thinking about is just celebrating Christmas, eating chicken, cow, and running around, going to visit friends, family, that is wonderful. But there must be something within your heart to say, Lord, I need your leadership. Guide me. I am tired of making mistakes in my life. For someone God is speaking to you, people will not continue to forgive your mistakes forever. There are mistakes you are going to make that may cost you your relevance for the rest of your life. And God himself is calling on you right now. And he's telling you, it is time. There are levels in life. These people are keeping the Christmas tree instead of them to focus on what we are discussing. We just commented the, the tree. It doesn't mean that... Um, are we together? You flog it out with destiny. Lord, I need your leadings. I made certain mistakes before I got married, you may say. But now I have five children. I cannot afford that mistake again. Because while I suffered alone, now there are five people there. I made certain mistakes. We were ten in ministry. 
but right now is a ministry with branches all over the world I cannot afford that mistake again listen to me stagnation mistakes unnecessary errors can be eroded in your life if you understand the leadings of the spirit the meek will he guide in judgment there are fathers here who need to just go and sit with your family and say let's pray even though I'm the head of this home I confess I do not have all the answers we need to go to the one who is the fountain of wisdom and to hear him speak to us there are leaders who need to retreat and say listen even though we are great leaders we do not have all the answers we need to go back and trust God to speak to us hallelujah oh God you are my God and I will ever love you oh God you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. I will seek you. of the shepherd you see when Jesus came in the New Testament he said I am the good shepherd a shepherd leads sheep and if you know anything about sheep sheep does not have horns they don't have any external system of defense the only defense of the sheep is the leadership and the security that the shepherd provides that means when the shepherd is not there the ship is exposed to wolves, exposed to lions, and all kinds of wild animals. Listen to me. It is a dangerous thing to sojourn this earth just using intellect, using brain work. Your mind is important, your brain is important. But the Bible, history, and experience have shown that any man who sojourns this complicated destiny, not paying attention to the leadings of God, will eventually end up in catastrophe many began their work arrogantly and even began to clap for themselves before the journey started today many of them have had their heads bent in shame because they've had to learn by pain and by experience that when god does not lead you you will go nowhere even if you think you are moving forward it is by you that i run through a troop it is by you that i leap over a wall God is speaking to someone. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. 
The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Your first prayer point tonight is to declare, Lord, I am a follower. I confess that I cannot lead myself. I have attempted to lead myself in politics. I have attempted to lead myself in marriage. I have attempted to lead myself in business. I have attempted to lead myself even in my spiritual sojourn. I have attempted to lead myself in ministry. Is someone praying? But I return to you, O oh, captain and guardian of my soul. Someone is praying. I make up my mind that beyond a listener, I am a follower. Follower of the leadings of the Spirit. Someone is praying. If I had followed you 20 years ago, I would not be where I am now. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. Some of you have followed friends and associations. Some of you have followed the, the, the philosophies of men. Some of you have followed your ego. Some of you have followed the path of ignorance. But the shepherd is calling you tonight. I am ever willing to lead you. Someone is praying. Pray from the depth of your heart. I make a commitment, oh God, that I will be a follower. I will follow your leadings. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It's time for me to make constructive advance spiritually, maritally, financially, ministerially, professionally in my career. Is someone praying? Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Family man, pray. Professional, pray. The continuity and the excelling of your destiny depends, depends, depends on the leadings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When this ministry started, and even when God started lifting us, I went to the Lord, and you would notice as a ministry, we have never done any conference or any convention. It's unconventional. I mean, a ministry this size, globally speaking, and yet God gave me a word and said, do not. My life is a product of the leadings of the Spirit. When this ministry started, that was the time when most ministries would generate their revenue through audio teachings, tapes, media ministry generally. And the Lord gave me an instruction and said, you will not sell any tape or any teaching, but you will put it online and my angel will take it to the nations. And with the foolishness of that instruction, I obeyed. And the rest... To him be the glory. Please listen, it, listen to me. I'm about to pray for you. But I sense very strongly in my heart that there are people here that God is speaking to and saying, listen, you have been ignoring my voice for a long time. You are already getting to a point where you are exhausting the boundary of God's mercy. It is dangerous to be at the other side of God's voice. Because the voice of God is where his power follows. His power will always go the direction of his voice. Maybe there are people in ministry right now who need to go back and say, Lord, lead me. I'm tired of assumptions. 
you have done 10 businesses none of them succeeded calm down what you need is not more capital what you need is to sit down man of God you may need to sit down family man you may need to sit down what is wrong the Bible says Proverbs 18 1 through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom it is okay to not know what is wrong but at least calm down for someone God is speaking to you you are rushing too much you are jumping from pillar to post and in your mind you do not believe anything is wrong you just believe that maybe they are just like you need to sit down your life is not going forward there are people who came into this Abuja 10, 20 years ago, respectfully speaking, but until now, there is no single door. At least if one door opens, we can say something is happening. No. You can't be in the middle of that, that kind of plethora of, of, of failure and then just explain it away. No. Something must be wrong. Sometimes pain is a signal. That your destiny is calling you but not that version of you you need to sit down listen there are family people who need to go and sit down and say why is this home not working son fighting with father they get up in the morning he's boxing husband fighting wife beating themselves no you need to sit down there is something about the leadings of the spirit we're ignoring there are people today you find them exhausted. Their entire finances is, is spent on flight fares. Europe today, America today, Abuja tomorrow, Italy next week. What are they looking for? Opportunities. The voice of God can save you that kind of pain. Are we together? Some of you right now are about to do business with armed robbers because you do not care about the voice of God. I don't care. Perhaps that's why God brought you to church tonight. To give you a word of caution that there is a, word, a way that seemeth right unto a man. Maybe there are men of God. Some of you have started fraternizing with wrong groups and wrong relationships. They are beginning to introduce you to extra biblical practices. In a bid to get more money or to get more fame. You are beginning to practice things you know are ungodly. Perhaps God brought you here tonight to tell you, listen, you need to settle down. He brought us to church. We're about to pray. I want you to listen. This is more than a man of God preaching tonight. The good shepherd is calling you. There are whole families that God is calling. He called your great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather said, ignore me, I'm a, I'm a professional farmer. And he died like that. He called on your grandfather. Your grandfather said, no, I'm a ritualist, I'm a herbalist. I, I, I can do this. He called on your father. For some of you, they ignored. Now he's calling on you. Help them, please. Do not allow your children suffer because of your pride. This is a word that is coming from God to someone. Do not allow your children suffer because of your pride. If you have not got direction, stay with God and humble yourself. Use the keys that I've given to you. He's able to breathe upon the sincerity of your meekness and speak to you. You can call him in prayer and he can speak to you through his word. He can speak to you audibly and directly in your spirit. Hallelujah. He can take advantage of supernatural encounters and speak his will to you. And in the multitude of counsel, the Bible says there is safety. He can speak to you through the voice, the successes and the pain of many. And he can speak to you through the prophetic. Which one have you ignored? Which one of these did you laugh at? Which one of these did you sit at table castigating and tearing down? Don't mind all these prophets. They are all fake people. And you are in trouble that only the prophetic can bring out. Maybe time to retrace your step. Lovingly and respectfully speaking. Some of you have ignored counsel. Nobody talks to you. No. Nobody talks to you. I'm a man all by myself. After all, I'm a millionaire. I have money. I have this. Doesn't matter. No. You are going to crash land. That's for sure. And some of you have never taken out time to pray for your destiny. You have turned men and women of God to slaves. 
Man of God, I just want to sow a little seed. I hope that you'll use it and pray for me this night. The covenant of priesthood demands that we pray for all the people under our care. But can I tell you, there are some of you, the, the reason why you are still stagnated is because you have not made up your mind to take your next level serious. The day you shut yourself back for three days and you mean it with God, like you shut yourself and say, I am fasting only to break at night. Lord, I am tired of this situation. Please give me an answer. It was God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, who shared his story and said that things were not working for him and they decided to set themselves to pray. And it was while he was praying, God gave him a few keys. And one time they were praying in Kaduna and the Lord asked him to come out and he saw a thick layer of darkness and he rebuked it and it rolled away, printed the publicity material and that was the end of it. My teaching tonight is for people who are tired of not producing results, tired of being stagnated. Are you ready to pray? For the next two minutes, I'm going to leave you with God. I'm not going to give you a prayer request. I want you to cry before the God of heaven. Forget that this is... Forget any other person who is here. Let it be just you and God. You want to kneel down. You want to stand for the next two minutes. You and the God of your salvation. Please cry about specific matters of your life. Man of God, pray, pray. Forget the crowd in Koinonia. This is you and Jesus Christ. Lord, give me direction for the next season of my life. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It is time to make constructive advance. Please pray. Spirit of the living God, lead me. I know I am called, but what is my call? Is it an evangelistic call? Is it a pastoral call? I'm tired of being an apostle today, an evangelist tomorrow, a prophet next tomorrow. What have you called me to do? Pray concerning the matters of your life and destiny. Lord, you are my shepherd, lead me. You are my shepherd, lead me. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm tired of failure. I'm tired of stagnation. Someone pray, Lord, you are my shepherd. Guide me. No assumptions. One more minute. Someone is crying. Mama, can you cry for your children? I didn't give birth to children for sorrow. Oh God, guide me. What is their destiny supposed to be like? Politician, pray. Lord, what is the, the blueprint for the next seasons of my life? Lord guide me enough is enough someone is praying lead me I access the voice of God I access the leadership of the good shepherd hallelujah we are still praying hallelujah please listen the next prayer point, you are going to say, Lord, every mistake I have made as a result of not subscribing to your leadership, no matter how long it has been, I cry, turn it to my advantage. Is someone ready to pray that prayer? Lift your voice and pray. Marital mistakes, maybe. Ministerial mistakes, maybe. Financial mistakes, maybe. Career mistakes, maybe. Someone pray. Every mistake, every setback, as a result of ignoring your voice, 
restore to me oh God the joy of salvation the mistake that cost me my job the mistake that cost me my wife the mistake that cost me my husband the mistake that cost me my children the mistake that cost me my the mantle upon my life restore 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 oh god of heaven restore restore harika toshka lika pranda gabaraka toshka diata restore in the name of jesus like the hair of samson restore restore honor restore grace restore dignity restore relationships covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh you may cry but make sure you pray you may cry but make sure you pray something is breaking in your spirit last prayer point father in the name of Jesus I go forward I go forward tired of stagnation someone prophesy I go forward in ministry I go forward maritally I go forward financially I go forward career wise every embargo of stagnation I crush it by the mercies of God Every mistake of the past hindering you from rising, hindering you from thriving, it's time to go forward. Shagabagata palakata praskata bekatosha, embrakata parakatoska tebelekata, career mistakes. Lord, I ready to go forward. Ministerial mistakes, ready to go forward. Marital mistakes ready to go forward financial mistakes ready to go forward mistakes as far as your spiritual life is concerned ready to go forward shabakata barakata pakatos koto prokete embrakata parasa braska belakatos koprakete one more minute and we're done please pray from your heart pray from your heart don't look around one more minute pray it's time to go forward by the message of the god of heaven i'm going forward going forward this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press on to the mark of the high calling in christ For in Jesus mighty name we pray shout a believing amen for in Jesus mighty name we pray amen. the Lord is my shepherd I want you to carry that mentality all through this week I am not without guidance the Lord is my shepherd 
I'm about to pray for you now as we wrap up the service. But I can tell you this, as simple as this service was, for someone, this will be the koinonia service you will not forget this year. Please hear me. Hear me. Let me tell you something I know about destiny. When your mistakes become too many, people draw a circle around your life and they avoid you. We are humans. People make mistakes here and there. But when your mistakes, your level, the margin of inaccuracy in your life, when it becomes ever widening, you are failing in everything. People will draw a line around you as though someone who is cursed and just leave you. Yes, you can make ministerial mistakes, marital mistakes, financial mistakes, but when it becomes from one mistake to another, from one pro, there are people who are never free from trouble. As soon as they are coming out, in fact, trouble comes to meet them in another trouble. This is why God sent me tonight. I need to pray for you because there are people who are in a pit right now. It is only prophecy that will bring you out because you are in, you have tried. When you find yourself in a well, the first thing you need to do is to stop digging. You can't keep digging and hoping you will come out. Father, in the name that is above all names, I stand tonight by the privilege of the anointing that you have given. Anyone who is in any kind of pit right now, marital pit, financial pit, ministerial pit, in the name of Jesus, let the power that raised Christ from the dead bring you out of that pit right now. Bring you out of that pit right now. Bring you out of that pit right now. Come out of that pit right now. Hear me. Everything you had that you thought was God that has been leading you into trouble. You have done more than 50 instructions that came from that supposed voice and not one of it has glorified God in your life. Every demon masquerading as the voice of God confusing you confusing you maritally confusing you financially confusing you spiritually i silence that voice right now 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 the spirits that have hijacked your dreams and visions to the point that you don't even want to dream again because you don't trust what you see for some of you you were accurate in your dreams when god shows you things they happen in the name of jesus by the blood of the eternal covenant i prophesy to you may your dreams and encounters be purified by the blood may your dreams and encounters be purified by the blood Hear me, I want to pray a very special prayer. My apologies for the time, but please listen. God is delivering someone. Anybody here who knowingly or unknowingly have gone to dark powers to get any kind of solution or people went on your behalf, I want to release you now. Listen carefully. The Bible says, woe to them that go to Egypt for help. Some of you, they carried your names and took it to shrines. You didn't know because they want you to marry, because they want you to have children. They want your ministry to thrive. Or some of you, sincerely, you were misled by well-intentioned, but maybe ignorant people or just wicked friends. Let's go to this herbalist. We will eat this. They will buff us with this so that this will happen. You cannot go to the devil and soil your hand with him and then suddenly wash your hand and say it's not my business there are rules of engagement no because there are many destinies that have been tied down right now because there are voices and altars saying you can't go you can't go for certain people parents respectfully speaking and with every sense of honor to parents parents please be careful 
don't allow desperation. I want my child to go abroad by fire, by force. I want my child to marry by fire, by force. I want my child, my daughter to have children by fire, by force. And sometimes by fire, by force has led people. Someone will say, well, it's not exactly a herbalist. He just knows how to see things. Someone is about to be released in the name of Jesus. Any altar that is calling your name right about now, whether it's in the east, the west, the north, or south, anyone on Aparaka Toskiata, in the name of Jesus, I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Hear me. And if your name was taken there by wicked men to say, let me see what will happen, that all the ladies in this family will not rise, that all the men in this family will rise and fall. I stand by the God who sent me. Any evil doer that took your name to any altar, help them please. I declare the sword of judgment upon them now. Help them please. Help them please. A sword of judgment upon them now. Whoever has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise, in the name of Jesus, may the ground open and swallow them. And hear me please. If there is anyone here because of your carelessness you are carrying causes from men of God causes from parents causes from innocent people people who stood and spoke maybe your past I'm not I'm not condemning you maybe before you got born again you were a rude and a lawless person no honor to people you could say anything to anyone and someone a mother hit her chest and said what you have done to me to be done to you i want to release you right now because many people don't know why it is not well with them things just tie down their destinies some of you have sat down and gossiped about men of god formed a circle and turned down men of god and the god that sent them was in that meeting watching all of you and in the midst of it you go back now and find out you cannot rise again in the name of Jesus, I invoke the blood of the eternal covenant. Every legal access over your life be released from it now. Be released from it now. Be released from it now. Be released from, from the cause of dishonor. Be released from the scourging tongues of men. Final prayer. If you come from a family here that they serve idols, please hear me. You come from a family where your grandfather, your father worship idols. You see, I want to pray and release you because there are sacrifices most people do not know the mystery of blood. You don't just slaughter a child or an innocent woman and then you drain the blood and perform sacrifices for 50 years and then just destroy the shrine and say it is over. No, there are rules of engagement. Let me release someone now. Because there are innocent people, some of you, you were not part of it. But that bloodline is holding you and you may not know why you are not rising. A man comes to you and says, I want to marry you. And those spirits manifest. You want to rise to a dimension and something pulls you down. In the name of Jesus, every altar that is speaking against you, every blood that is speaking like the blood of Abel, I call upon the blood of Jesus to silence that blood right now. I invoke the blood of Jesus to silence that blood right now.
this also has to do with territories sacrificed children killed virgins killed all kinds of people killed missionaries one more time I'm saying it if there is any blood that is saying come back when you are going forward if there is any blood that is saying come back like your father I stand tonight koinonia in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you go forward go forward go forward go forward I release you 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 go forward thank you Jesus from the rising of the Sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. One more time. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name. to make an altar call right about now in such a powerful service like this there are people right now who are sitting and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you you shouted amen to every prayer except one and the Lord wants you to say amen to that one last prayer to make your relationship right with Jesus let's minimize movement so that we can honor the salvation prayer Whilst you were listening to me, young, old, rich, poor, male, female, on ground here and following online, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you that you must, you need to make it right with Jesus Christ. For others, you want to rededicate your life. You're saying, Apostle, I remember making this decision before, but right now, sincerely, I cannot say my ways are right with God with Jesus Christ. You are in this auditorium, you are in all the over overflows outside. I'm going to count one to five very quickly for sake of time. I want you to leave your seat and to rush, come and stand right in front here and let me pray for you as I lead you to Jesus. Now, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Summon the courage and come. I begin my counting now, one. Let's celebrate them as they come. After such a prophetic service, you need to make it right with Jesus without confusion. Remember, the intent of this service is to clear all confusion from our life. Three, if you're coming, please rush. If you're coming from outside, make that quickly, please. Let, let all of the officials allow them to come in so that... Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus said, ye must be born again. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is where he gives us an opportunity to start afresh again. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I salute your courage, all of you who have come out. And I don't care what has gone right or what has gone wrong. I just want you to know that Jesus is able to give you a new beginning. Thank you, sir, for the courage to come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus, may I request that you lift your right hand if you can. The Lord is giving you a new beginning. Please say after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. If you are joining them, please join them quickly. The prayer has begun. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Forgive my sins. I accept you into my heart. As my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King, I renounce all the hidden works of darkness and I declare that I am a child of God. From tonight until forever, I am yours. I am your child. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. They have made this commitment by faith and in truth. And based on the integrity of your word, I declare upon every one of them that their sins are forgiven. 
and in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I call you bona fide recipients of eternal life you are recipients of the life of God you go from glory to glory and even grace to grace in the name of Jesus Christ the power to live a victorious Christian life I release upon you and I cut you away from anything that is anti-God you go from glory to glory and then grace to grace in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please may I request um, except for him this man let me have one counselor just talk with you maybe pastor Jakes you could just talk with him may I please request for all of you to just move to my right which is your left all of you you just have a word very quickly and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you thank you so very much thank you immortal invisible god only wise most glorious most precious the ancient of days please be upstanding everybody thank you for your patience tonight I assure you that this week will be a week of wonders for you in the name of Jesus Christ may I please encourage everyone to go back and listen to this message again the Lord is my shepherd and call to the attention of as many you know who need this teaching settle down listen to it again and pray the prayers that came along with the teaching and trust God to give you permanent victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus just one announcement for tonight very quickly and then we'll be on our way this is to announce the workers appreciation dinner hallelujah koinonia workers appreciation dinner for abuja here comes up this saturday december 10th 5 p.m please kindly note the following number one attendance is strictly by invitation workers can get information from their respective heads of department the attendees are kindly advised to comply with the dress code number three your ticket only admits you and cannot be transferred to another person all of that please heads of department let's do well to feed our people with the information family and friends without tickets will not be allowed it's written here so please i want you to take note and then maybe let me just add one more sorry for the committee i'm not part of the committee but let me just add a word as much as possible nursing mothers and those with very little children who are workers please if you can for the dinner please i would request that you keep them behind um because we don't want children running around and then um putting a burden because it's workers so all the workers is is i'm the one hosting it to say thank you so please let's minimize the labor as much as possible if it's if you have to come with them then that's fine we we'll understand except otherwise please do well to keep the children um at home maybe for nursing mothers you could come and there'll always be conveniences for you to do the needful for the children have you been blessed tonight May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that this week beginning is a week of miracles for you. May you hear the voice of God and access the leadings of the Spirit like never before. Come Sunday, you will come and stand here with very strange testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. After the grace, I want you to greet and hug someone. Tell them the Lord is my shepherd. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is your shepherd. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye.
pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 